So now I have this directory. Uh, I want to create a file inside of it. Um, I'm just going to cd into it because it makes it easier. Again, if I'm inside the directory, I can manipulate things just by typing them directly. I don't need to use any paths. Uh, so I'm going to cd into it just to save you the trouble of typing cs1300 slash in front of everything. But there's no right or wrong way to do this. You could do this without cd'ing into it first. Um, there's a simple command in Linux called touch. Touch creates an empty file. Um, so if we just do touch my file, and now I do an ls, you'll see I have one file in this directory called my file. You may be used to an operating system like Windows where all files always have file extensions. They're always my file dot something, and that something matters. Uh, in Linux, you often will see that, but that something doesn't matter. Um, unlike Windows, the file type doesn't, it's much less strictly defined than Linux. Uh, everything is kind of treated the same. So by default, if you have a file, I mean the convention, again, it doesn't really matter. The convention is a file with no file extension is generally a text file. It would be the same as, sometimes you'll see people do it as like file.txt. So I create two files. But there's nothing special about this one just because it has a .txt after it. They're all just text files. Um, that's different from some other operating systems. But uh, yeah, something with no name after it, this could also be a program, but we'll, it's not. It's just an empty text file. Um, so I have these two files, but they're completely empty. We will get into how we can put things into them later. Um, what we're going to do right now is delete them. So once you create a couple of files, there's a command called rm, which will remove the files. So you can do rm. Uh, so this is worth noting. You go to a particular, and this terminal has good autocomplete. So don't waste your time typing long things. If you do something like my and hit tab, it's going to automatically complete it out as far as I can. Now, this actually isn't the only completion, right? Because this also could be the .txt. If I hit tab again two more times, it'll actually show me the list of every possible completion from this point. So it's stopping here because this is one possible completion. But if I went and added dot and then hit tab, it'll auto-complete out to the other one. Um, yes? If files and other questions. Files and directories are relatively interchangeable. What is the difference between creating a file and creating a directory? So they're not, files and directories are not interchangeable. Okay. Um, without getting too far into it, uh, yeah, a directory is kind of a fundamentally different thing um, in the file system. But everything other than directories is pretty much a file. Okay. Um, that's why the directories, I mean, the directories show up in blue, and we'll actually see this in a sec. The directories show up in blue, the files show up in white. There's different things you can do to them. I will demonstrate momentarily. Um, but say I wanted to, getting back to the delete, if I want to delete one of these files, you can always hit tab to autocomplete. That's just a saves you time kind of thing. But if I do rm and I do this again, I'll get back to only having one file, right? I can do rm on that file. And I'm back to an empty directory. A couple of things that we're going to go over now. So I'm going to create a couple of files again. Uh, touch. So you can actually give the touch command multiple arguments. If you just put spaces between them, it'll create three different files for me. So I'm going to touch file one, file two, file three. If I do ls, we'll see I now have those three files. Sometimes you want to do something like just immediately remove all the files in this folder. Uh, one way to do that is I could go do rm and type them each in individually. That's kind of a pain in the ass. Um, This gets way more complicated than what we're about to go over, but there's an entire suite of wildcards that you can use in the terminal that essentially will expand to include certain files. We'll probably do an advanced terminal session that goes into this. You can, if anyone's heard of regular expressions, you can actually get into a lot of regular expression stuff here to like specify really innately exactly what subset of files you want in the current folder. But the one people use all the time and the one worth knowing is just the star. The star means anything. So if I do rm star, it's going to delete everything in the current folder. You should also be careful with this. When you use the rm command, it's not sending anything to a garbage bin. It's gone for good. You can't really get it back without enormous amounts of work. Um, ergo, rm star has the potential to do a lot of damage if you run it in a folder where you're not paying attention and all of a sudden you've deleted everything in that folder. So, I'm about to run this command, but don't be going into some important directory full of all your work thus far this year and doing rm star. 
If you're using Dropbox, you could probably get on the Dropbox site and recover it somehow, but this is actually going to delete everything in the folder I'm currently in. And if I do an LS afterwards, you'll see everything's gone. Some people, uh, there's, if I do, uh, if I do man rm, I can read out all of the rm commands. There's a way to get the rm command to warn you. Uh, so if you do rm-i, I'm going to run my touch command again to recreate the files I was dealing with. They're all back. If I do rm-i star, um, I used an rm star, I? Okay. So I have all my files. If I do rm-i star, it's going to ask me one at a time whether or not I actually, this will confirm that I want to delete all files, that I want to delete each file. Some people actually like to, there's a thing called aliasing, we probably won't get to this tonight, but you can basically tell your terminal to every time you run rm to automatically do rm-i. Some people like to do that because it avoids this I accidentally just deleted everything command. Um, it's, not turn, it's not like that by default, but if you do use the dash i, I have to type in a y and it's going to delete each of them one at a time. So, these commands we're going over tonight, I'm kind of showing you the base use case for the command. They have all kinds of other things they can do, which you can read about on the man page if you're looking for some kind of specialized behavior. Um, let's look at some of the details. So I'm going to make another directory inside my CS1300. I'm just going to call it test directory. So we'll see. I now have a directory called test directory. I'm going to create a couple of files inside there, and I'm not even going to bother CDing into it. I'm just going to do test directory, then the name of the file. So I'm going to do file one, then test directory, file two. So again, there's still only a directory in my current folder, but if I do ls test directory, there's two files inside of there. So we went over the rmdir command earlier, remove directory. So that's what I want to do now. I want to remove my test directory. So if I do rmdir test directory, it's going to throw me an error. The remove directory command will only work if the directory is empty. Um, this is a fail safe that kind of dates back a long time and has never been changed for historical reasons. But remove directory will only work on empty directories. As it turns out, that makes remove directory a very useless command because your directories aren't often empty. And who wants to go and individually delete every file inside a directory in order to delete the directory itself? So the rm command can actually deal with this for us. If we use the rm command, and I just run it on test directory, I'm going to also get an error. It's going to say, cannot remove it. It's a directory. So what do we do? Remove directory command won't remove it because it's not empty. The rm command won't remove it because it's a directory. Well, there's a way to deal with that. If you do rm-r, r is for recursive. rm-r followed by a directory name will automatically go into that directory, delete everything inside of it, and then come up and call remove directory on the directory itself. So rm-r is what people almost always use when they want to remove a directory. Um, so now if I do rm-r test directory, it completes without error, the directory is gone, as are all the files that were inside of it. So all the ways you can delete things. This then leads into the most dangerous command on a Unix system, which is rm-r slash star, which, if it weren't for a few little details which you may get into here, would conceivably delete everything in my entire file system. So don't run this command. Uh, I'm not going to try to run this command because while it won't actually delete everything in the file system, it will do plenty of damage. Um, there actually are permissions. We haven't really talked about that yet. And as it turns out, by default, you don't have permission to delete these things up here. So if you try to run this command, it will give you a lot of permission errors. But it will successfully go ahead and delete every file that you have permission to delete on the file system, meaning everything in here. Um, so don't run this command. It's not quite as bad as it might seem, but it's plenty bad nonetheless. Um, just an FYI, that's one of the classic trolling for nukes you'll get online when someone asks for help on a form and they just do, oh yeah, just run rm slash star dash r. And you see if they fall for it and feel sorry for them if they do. Questions on how to delete things of assorted varieties? So you did R and star or something along those lines? Yeah. Um, yes, 
会员。There's probably a way to restore that, but we're going to have to go to the Dropbox site. So grab me when we're done, and we can go to the Dropbox website, and I think it'll let us restore that in some form or another. Like I said, be careful. <laughs> Linux is not an operating system full of padded walls, right? It's an operating system that lets you do what you want to do and doesn't try to get in your way. But that means that if you want to do the wrong thing, it's not going to sit there and hold your hand and ask why you want to do that. Um, it places a lot of trust on you, the user, to know what you're doing. Uh, so just be aware of that. Think twice before you run a command. Um, I probably should have said that before I said the RM command. But anyway, questions on deleting things? So there is actually a trash folder that behaves like trash folders and other operating systems. When you're working on the terminal, however, you completely bypass this. So the only time you'll ever see something in here is if you open up the GUI home folder and if you hit the delete button, write a file selected, then it'll send it to the trash can. When you're working on a folder, when you're working in a folder like this, it won't actually do anything like that. All right? Okay.